What's going on guys? Today I'm real excited because I get to work on something that you don't ever see really here in the Arizona desert. And you don't actually see a whole lot of them on YouTube, matter of fact. I can't remember a person right off the top of my head that actually even made a repair on one of them. Well, I mean, I guess that's kind of the same thing. It has a five horsepower motor, but you guys are going to love it. It's great. We're working on an actual de-thatcher or power rake which you don't ever see those it's pretty cool so we got a power rake here and as of right now the only main problem you know i can't tell the engine and he tried to start it but you can see the cord the cord is just a no good thing so we're going to fix this recoil today and i'm just excited to be working on a power thatcher that way he can get out there and power thatch around you know the basketball court and the tennis court and all that other good stuff and he can just get to work. My last video you guys just watched, I fixed um, his lawnmower, and now we're fixing his car with that. It's actually the same day, but different week for you guys. So let's get right into this repair. We got eight millimeters around the recoil. Okay, so like I said, we're just gonna be doing eight millimeters. We got one, remember it's a bolt and a washer. I mean, this repair is gonna work for any kind of like five horsepower motor. You know, even if this one didn't work, I mean, I te technically, I think this is only a three horsepower motor, but it's big like a five horse, so you can put a five horse on there. It's about the same size as a Predator 212, but, okay, so let's see. Let me just take this rope actually off here, which we just got a bolt here that looks like a 10. See, we'll just use the pressing wrench here. We don't have to take it all the way off, just enough to where we can slide this rope out so we can look at it. Come on, baby. There we go. Okay. So here we are. We're just. So the spring looks like it's still good. So we might be able to just, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull it all the way out like this. We're gonna take this knot out here. We're just gonna snip this knot out. This way we can use the same rope. It's not gonna hurt nothing. And we'll slide that back, let this go, and start rewinding it now and make sure we're not here, no. Oh, you hear that spring sliding? Let me see if we can do it again. That's not good. Hang on, let's take this apart. So it looks like that's a 10 millimeter. We'll just unscrew that. Spring looks good. <clears throat> okay. Everything's looking good in there. And it broke. You guys can see up there. Let's see if we can't adjust you. You guys see where it, right there it is? And then it's deattached right there. So what I'm going to do now is check on the internet and see if we can't find this exact recoil here. But you guys can definitely tell that busted. The news is I found another recoil that will fit. It's a 212. Obviously it has this way smaller rope. So we're going to pull this rope out. Yeah, look how small that rope is. And we're going to put a longer new rope in and then we'll put that back on the machine. Okay, brand new rope, longer, so now we can take this and start it. And I'm just surprised, you know, because this is a way smaller engine, but this little 212 is going to work fine for it. Then we hand start the bottom one. And then zip them down. Okay, now from here we're going to take the rope, pull it up, wrap it up. Tighten back down this bolt here. It is pulling over the engine. 
So that's good. So now let's see if we can get her to start. Choke on, throttle it up. Not seeing an on and off switch back here. Not seeing a fuel on. Okay, so let's see. So I couldn't tell until after I got the recoil on, but it looks like we are going to have to clean the carburetor a little bit. It's been sitting for a few years, he says. So let's look into this carburetor here. Two 10 millimeter nuts there. Looks like nothing on the top. It didn't even, I didn't want to put starting fluid in it. I tried to spray a little brake cleaner in there. It didn't pop. Got a little rust. Move the choke. Separate it up a little bit there. And then from here, we'll throttle it. Remove the throttle cable. Remove the spring. Now we just got to get the fuel line off. And I should be able to lift it up over where it's not going to spill into. So let me get that fuel line off and then we'll get this carburetor off, clean it up. It's going to leak some gas, but that's not that big of a deal. Okay, now that I almost got it off, I'll bend these little tabs out of the way. There we go. Oh, that's some bad gas. Yeah. You got a cup? Um, how about a, or any kind of container? How about a empty beer bottle? Empty beer bottle works too. It's the color of beer. Yeah, they didn't look good. Yeah. So there must have been a little bit of gas left in it when I put some new gas in yeah. it. Oh, yeah, there goes the clear stuff. Let's get some of that nasty stuff out. We'll just drain it. That's better safe than sorry. You didn't put that much in there, did you? No, I didn't. Okay, yeah, we'll just drain it. I want to make sure it's going to run first. Okay, I moved the fuel line up out of the way. I drained a lot of the gas out. It looked like all the bad stuff was at the bottom. Let's see what we can see. A little bit, not too bad, but now I can take the carburetor off and it's all the standard stuff, 10 millimeter. Let's take it to the car and see what we're working with. Yeah, we're looking pretty grody here. So I'm gonna clean up this carburetor and this thing should fire right up when I'm done. I always hate this, it stains your hand and stuff. Now without further ado, we can get back to doing this. I cleaned up this carburetor a lot, it's looking good. Go ahead and just slap that back on, throttle it up, put our throttle linkage back on. I can't believe this thing's a dethatcher. That is crazy to me. You know, we never get to work on those. Ugh. No fuel shut off on this. That's fine. It's not a big deal. We got that back on. I'll just slap that choke back on. Now from here we'll put the clamp back on and as we're doing this we're also looking for leaks. This way we know if we're not leaking or not and so far so good. No leaks coming out. We'll put this gasket back on. Now we're going to put the air filter cover back on. This up. Two nuts. These are just 10 millimeters. And now this dethatcher and power rake should start right up. We'll go ahead and leave it on choke for now. Go ahead. 
ahead and put the air filter back on. I have a feeling we're good now. That jet was plumb clogged. Ain't no way this thing was gonna start no matter how much we did. So let me make sure what we're looking at. Looking good, looking good. Okay. Oh yeah. No, we should have enough gas in there. At least enough to fill the bowl. Maybe I should put some more in there just to be safe. That's one more check. Things ready to do some power raking, some dethatching. As you guys see, it just it hasn't been started in a long time. Owner said there was some um, what you call them, mud wasp? Mud gobbers. Mud gobbers. Yeah, you can see the mud around there. He it was from Iowa, so where they actually use power rakes in Iowa, but not here in Arizona. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching me repair a dethatcher it was pretty fun we're gonna be you uh the owners that be using it here to do his grass and you know it's pretty good to see it because it makes a really healthy lawn and not a lot of people here in our town of kingman does that so yeah i really appreciate you guys checking it out don't forget to hit that like button also hit that subscribe button